we're going to be creating a navigation bar. So converting the unordered list and the list items into a navigation bar that's going to be able to change using the CSS grid and expand whenever we've got a larger size screen and then also contract whenever there's a smaller size screen. So fully responsive navigation bar that's gonna work across screens. So that's when we're gonna be focused on the nav bar. We're gonna do a quick update from where we left off in the last lesson using the grid column. And there's a shorthand format for the start and the end so that you can do that within the one statement. So this is gonna be the using the just the grid column and then a slash between the numbers, and that's gonna represent the start and the end. So this is another way, and it's actually gonna be a shorter way that you can write the grid start and ends. And of course, we're leaving the main content area as is from before, and just updating the grid columns. I'm also gonna add additional for the rows. So we've got the footer as automatic. So let's make an update to the footer, and we'll set the main rows area to be 500 picks. So we'll save that, and that's gonna stretch out our content. And actually, let's update this to be 100 picks. So that gives us more of a structured type look for the website. And now we can look at the navigation bar and converting the navigation bar, adding in the navigation items. So we already have the nav element, and within the nav element, we're using the unordered list in order to structure our list items, and then we're gonna apply the styling in order to make this look like a navigation list. So each one of the list items is gonna contain a hyperlink, and this is gonna to be to the page that's gonna be referenced within the navigation. So linking out, and we're just using placeholders right now, so using the hash and setting up a typical structure that you would have for navigation, so for the home page, and then we'll add in four different pages for this website template. So set up the about, then select, and this can be products, and the last one will be contact. So that will give us a typical structure as to what we might typically have for our navigation bar. So we're setting that up, and we're gonna use the display grid in order to select and to create a grid format, just as we did with the grid for the rest of the page. So we want to select the unordered list that's contained within the nav, and we're gonna set that as a grid. So select the element, the nav, unordered list, and apply a property for display, and set that as grid. So that will allow us to set the list items, set up the way that we want them to be presented. And then using what we did before, where we're using the grid template columns, we're gonna use the same property and set the values for the columns, and using the repeat for, and set that to be one FR. So that will give them equal width across. And now we can see that we've already got the styling being added. The repeat just does the repeat for the one FR across. So this is gonna now be a responsive structure where we're, when we resize it, we see that it's being uh, adjusted. We need to get rid of the default styling for the unordered list and remove out the styling and we also want to justify the content so we want to center justify the content as well justify content property set that to be center and then also to justify the items contained within the content we want to center those as well so that will automatically center the items and we still need to get rid of the list styling properties and that's going to be what we've got within the navigation for the list items. So also selecting for the unordered list, set the list style type to none. And we also wanna set the margin to zero and padding to zero. So this will get rid of any default styling. We can also increase the padding in order to have additional spacing around the list items. For the list items themselves, for the anchor tags, get rid of the underline by updating the text decor decoration and set that to none so that will remove the underlines for the page elements you can also set a background color for them and i'll just set that to be black add some padding around the elements increase the padding size we can also go to 15 picks and again this is depending on how you want the styling so in this case i'm going to set this back to 10 so that it fits in a little bit better within the page. 
color of the font. So set that to be white. So you can see it on the dark background. And if we want to set it for the entire list item, copy and paste those values into the list item. And for the list item, we can as well, we can set a width. So if we want to be 90% of the available spacing and what the 90% will reflect is going to be that particular list item. And we've got four of them across because we already set the columns within the grid. So 90% will be 90% of each one of the cells that are there. So that's going to create this type of format where we can resize it and we're going to have the navigation bar expanding as well. So you can also set a default width for these. So depending on what kind of format and styling that you want to apply to your page. I'm also going to set the text align to center. So that will center align the text content. And as we expand it, it's going to keep the navigation bar aligned. For the list items as well, we can set a line height. And we know we have a default of 50 picks that we've set for it. And this way we can remove out the padding. So that will move the list items right to the top. So for the unordered list as well, remove out that padding. So that will stack that properly within the navigation bar. And what the line height is doing is this is allowing us to vertically align the text content within the list items. So without the line height, it's just going to take whatever available spacing is. You can also set the height of the element. And we know that this is going to be 50 picks. So you can do that as well, but that's not going to align the text vertically centered. So we'll keep it as the line height of 50 picks. So that allows us to vertically center those elements. And now we add in the hover effect. It makes it more that these elements are more clickable. So we can select the list item and apply a hover to it. And whenever the hover takes place, let's update the background color to be red. And we don't need to reset the width. We don't need the text align and we don't need the line height. So now whenever they get hovered over, they're going to highlight in red. A grid template rows. So we've already set the columns and we can set the rows and we want to set the rows to be 50 picks. So that will contain the parent content directly within the main navigation list. And we've already set it here within the template rows. So we can also update this to be auto. So that will fit a little bit better within the navigation bar. Let's also set a background color for the navigation bar itself. And we'll update the background color. So I'm going to make it slightly darker. And it still can see that whenever we hover over the navigation bar, we still get those elements being highlighted using the CSS grid. So go ahead and try it and apply it to your project and you'll be ready to move on to the next lesson.